Hello and welcome everybody to the last uh, live hangout for this week. Um, thank you so much for taking your time on a Saturday to, uh, to join me. Um, it's going to be fun today. We're going to do a little bit of uh, theory. Uh, I also want to I have a couple of surprises for you, so just stick with me. This is not going to be uh, a full hour long. We're going to do it a little bit shorter today, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, and I want to get to your questions. Um, so uh, let me just start by saying the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all of our specials are still going on until next Friday. That's December 6th. Uh, you can save 40 to 6 percent off of our DVDs if you go to pianowithwilly.com. Um, and also, we're going to be doing... Uh, our live training starting in December. That's going to be going live in December. You can lock in to a great low rate right now. Um, uh, so you can sign up for Piano with Willie Live for only $19.95 a month. After that, it's going to go up to $39.95. So you can save 50% off of that. Today, we are officially releasing our Drums with Willie. Today is the Drums with Willie day. Um, now, I don't play drums, as I said in my email this morning, uh, just a little bit of drums. Uh, but I teamed up with a, a friend of mine who lives in Connecticut. He can't be here today, um, uh, Mike Marble. He's a fantastic drummer and a real great teacher, just an overall uh, fun guy to work with. Um, so I encourage you, even if you you know are not interested in signing up for the drums or whatnot, maybe you know somebody who is, but I encourage you, go to drumswithwilly.com. Um, and then click on slash uh, register. You should see a button there or follow the link in the email that I sent today. And there's some great videos of him teaching. So you can pick up a couple of you know tips and tricks right there. The Drums and Willie program follows the same six-step program that I've created for Piano to Willie and Homeschool Piano. So you're going to learn rhythm, you're going to learn technique, you're going to learn how to read music, you're going to get ear training, you're going to learn songs and grooves, and you're also going to learn how to improvise uh, at the drums, being able to come up with your own stuff. So it's really a fantastic program uh, for anyone that really wants to learn drums. It's designed for the uh, ground up. So if you're already a drummer, it's probably not for you. But if you're looking to get into playing drums, um, if you have a child or a grandchild or a friend that might be interested in this, uh, they can sign up for 50% off until uh, next Friday, December 6th as well. Okay, so now today we're going to do the Hangout. And I'm doing the Hangout today because I need to be portable, and you're going to see why in a few minutes. Uh, so first of all, let me get into some of these questions. Um, Will the surprise be you'll use your karate skills to break a cinder block with your head? Let's see. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this keyboard with my head. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, actually, I'll tell you what. I got, I got a real funny story. You guys are going to love this. You're going to think I'm the worst father in the world. But uh, my son and I take karate together. Um, and, you know, we're very serious. Um, actually, uh, I won first prize in the karate competition uh, for adults, uh, my first karate competition. Um, and we're like really loud, so like we're doing like you know, ah, you know, like you know, like really like getting into it. Um, so we're breaking boards, right? So I'm holding the board for him. He's like permission to break the board, sir. And he yes, you know. So I hold the board, and he's like, ah, you know, breaks the board. So then he's six, you know. He holds it for me, right? And I'm like, okay, you ready, Connor? You know, you all set? Yeah, 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 all set. I'm like, ah. Yeah. And the poor kid, he literally went, what? <laughs> and landed on his back. Um, I mean, he held that board straight the whole time. It didn't hit him in the face. He was, he was, uh, it was really good. He really, uh, he, he did a great job. I felt bad, but you know what? He, uh, he, he really did a great job, and the teacher was impressed at how well of a job that he did. Um, so anyway, yeah. I don't do that anymore with him. It's maybe a little bit too much. But he's doing a great job. He's at a yellow belt now, and we're going to be testing for our next belt very soon. So uh, we actually, uh, I ran a 5K this morning. I got to tell you, whoo, 28.30 was my, oh, 28.28, I think, was my time. About the same as last year. And I think, you know, this year I was a little off because I think I'm coming down with something. Um, but, uh, whoo. That was, uh, that was something. 20 degrees outside. All right, so let's get to some music questions. Um, uh, Willie, what are the daily fundamentals that will get me to play at your level? Um, okay, uh, let me do this. Uh, forgive me, I should have set this up earlier, but let me just get this over here now. Um, input, ba -ba 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 -ba. And here we go. Okay, so these, this is our 
Piano and Willie method. And this method has been designed specifically to bring your level up. Now, um, I believe in being completely honest with students, okay? Uh, because if I'm not honest, then you're not going to trust me, and you're going to think that I'm just trying to sell you like stuff. Um, yeah, I do try to sell you stuff because I believe in my product, I believe in my lessons, and I think that you can really learn. But I'm not. I don't want to sell you uh, false hope or false dreams. This kind of stuff takes work. Um, to get to the level we're on at, it's not just doing this. It's also doing a bunch of gigs. I mean, I've done thousands of gigs, uh, playing gigs with a bunch of different people, a bunch of different styles, uh, you, you know, like doing a lot of listening, doing a lot of studying, you know, so th there's a lot of work to it. But my challenge to you, what I would suggest for you is don't try to play like me, okay? You will never, ever play like me. And I'm not trying to be harsh in saying that. It's a reality. And it's not a reality in that, like, oh, you'll never be able to play at my level. You'll be able to play past my level if you keep working at it, right? That what I mean by when I say you'll never play like me is you're never going to have the same expression at the instrument that I'll have. Instead, you want to have your expression. And it took me a while to, like, kind of get that in my mind and in my, in my musical soul that, you know what, stop comparing yourself to other players. You play the way that you play. Now, of course, within playing within the way you play, we say to ourselves, oh, I want to get better at this. And that you most certainly should do. You most certainly should get better. And now to get better at those musical fundamentals, this is where our method comes in. So the first thing is you start with that foundational stuff. So really, you know, make sure that you've got your foundational skills uh, in order. How's your rhythm? Is your rhythm really strong? If your rhythm isn't strong, then you're going to put some, uh, you know, some time and attention into rhythm. How's your technique? Do you feel like you're able to get out your ideas at the instrument when you sit down and play, or do you feel like, ah, oh, ah, oh, you, know, you know, you're kind of getting jammed up finger-wise, or your arms are getting tired or sore or whatnot? If that's the case, then you're going to focus some attention on technique. How's your music reading, right? Can you read at least, you know, like if I wrote something like this up here, and I had, you know, uh, whatever, let's just do that, you know, and I had... Uh, D minor 7, G7, not really good, but could you at least read something like this, you know? So if someone put that in front of you, could you say, oh, I know a D minor 7 chord, I know a G7 chord, I know what these notes are, I know it's a G clef, and whatnot. You need to be able to read at least that well. You need to be able to read something from a fake book, a lead sheet, okay? If you could do that, then all right, now you could start to try reading more classical repertoire like sonatinas or, you know, Bach chorales or etudes or whatnot. Okay, so that's your foundational. The foundational stuff is stuff that you work on to make it fun for you to practice. Because doing this stuff, yeah, it's fun once we're at that advanced level. But let's, you know, let's face facts here. I mean, it's like, you know, just practicing scales or technical stuff, you know, is only fun to a point. Instead, we want to get into some of those songs, the styles, and the concepts. So what I suggest that students do is that I suggest that they have a foundational element to their practice, okay? And they also incorporate the foundational. And now, I understand that it's already there, but now let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, so the foundational is maybe one or two lessons. So this means you might be working on the Mastering Rhythms Volume 1 lesson, and you might be working on Faster Fingers, okay? Two of our very popular lessons. So this might be Mastering Rhythms, uh, Mastering Rhythms, and this might be Faster Fingers, okay? So this is going to get your foundational house in order. This is really going to start to, to uh, uh, you know, get your foundations uh, uh, where they need to be. Uh, now, notice it doesn't include any music reading for right now, because we don't have to do that. We can wait until we're done with our rhythm, then we can, boom, bring in the music reading. So we don't have to do all three at once. One or two is good enough to start with. And I suggest only starting with one or two, because you do more than that, you're going to bite off too much, and you're going to get frustrated. Uh, then in foundational, I would suggest doing one uh, lesson from foundational. Again, song, style, or concept. So you decide which one you want to do. So maybe around this time of year, you might say, I don't know, uh, I want to do a song, so I want to do uh, the first Noel, okay? You know, uh, and so I'm going to work on first Noel while also doing Mastering Rhythms and Faster Fingers. Now look at that practice routine. 
what does that give you? That gives you a fantastic practice routine right here because you're working on a song, you're getting something into your repertoire, but then in addition to that, you're really uh, getting your rhythms up to speed and you're getting your technical stuff up to speed. So it's a great, well-balanced practice session. Just like a well-balanced meal, this is a well-balanced practice session. So if you do this and you keep working through this system, right, the more that you work through this, the more your skills are going to are going to get elevated. The more your skills are elevated, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to express what you have in here and what you have in here. Remember, there's a mind-body connection. Okay, we have things in our mind that we think we should know how to play. We have things that we like conceptualize, like oh, I want to be able to play that or play like this or whatnot. Okay, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But then there's also things in our soul that we need to play. Like when we sit down and we just like. You know, the music is just coming through us and pouring through us. So we need to have that mind-body connection in that when we're sitting down and, like, like just, like, viscerally putting ourselves out there, we want to make sure that the, uh, uh, you know, the cerebral part of our existence doesn't get in the way and say, oh, no, no, you know, and start to do all the judgments and stuff, okay? So the more you bring your level up, the more that you're going to, like, Got to be able to keep that mind-body thing in balance. All right, so let me go on to another question. Uh, is your new course step-by-step -step instead of randomly choosing uh, what you think is best? Man, these questions move around so fast. Um, what I can tell you, because, you know, we try and keep certain things under wraps until we, you know, uh, have them ready to go. But what I can tell you is this. Um, we, again, being honest, we need to sell product in order to keep going with what it is we do. And uh, I want to just take a moment and say thank you. Uh, the sales that, that you guys have um, uh, you know, brought in to us over the past month uh, really supports what it is that we're doing, and we appreciate that. So we need that in order to be able to do what it is we're doing. What I want to say in that is that I'm right in the middle, and our, my whole team is right in the middle. We're not looking just to sell you product. We're not looking like, okay, well, here, you have this, and I'll, oh, sell them this, and then sell them this, and then sell them that, okay? Obviously, we need to make sales in order to support our business and to be able to have the capital to be able to do uh, exciting new things. We really do have meetings, and you're going to see our office in a few minutes. We have meetings in which we sit down and we're thinking about, okay, well, what's the best way of getting the right lesson to the student at that time? And so now we've been working a lot on this 22-point um, assessment, you're going to see that get fleshed out more uh, over the next couple of weeks. Okay, uh, we hope to have it really ready for prime time around January. Um, I'll also let you know we're working on a brand new web site, brand new web presence. Um, so we have our web development team who they've done homeschool piano, they've done drums with Willie, they've, they've done a really nice job. They're now working on piano with Willie um, to revamp the whole experience and make it much much easier for students to be able to know exactly what it is to do and to do next. Uh, we also have something very special coming up, um, which I'll give you a little teaser about. Uh, wouldn't it be great if you could upload videos and be able to get feedback back from a teacher? Right? Now, why do we do the uploading video rather than a live lesson? Well, because right now it's Saturday at noontime, but across the world it's Saturday at midnight. You know, um, So sometimes the live thing doesn't work so well. So, um, and then also, how many times have you been, you know, in a live situation or in a live teacher say, oh, I can play that better at home, or I played that better this morning, okay? So this way, with an uploaded video, you're able to uh, really get your best take and then send it to us, and then uh, myself or another teacher can um, give you some ideas on what it is that you can do. So we're working on all of these initiatives to make it so that um, you really know your direction so that you really know, how do I get from here to here? Now, I have a challenge to all of you, right? The challenge is, write to us, you know? Uh, you're going to see some people in a few minutes that their job is to work for you, okay? My job is to work for you. Um, so we're all working here for you. So if you contact us, we're going to, like, work with you. So feel free to give us a call. Our phone number is, uh, I'll just put it up here just so you have it, 401-331-0000, uh, okay? 
You can call us at any time while we're here Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're here today, Saturday, but this is the only day that we're here Saturday in the year. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also send an email, support at jazzedge.com. If you're having issues, you're like, I just don't know what to do next, write in to us and we will help you. Okay? And if you're not satisfied with the response, write in again, all right? And we'll help you again. Our job is to help you. So look for those new initiatives that are coming out. I mean, we work on this stuff every day. We're trying to make the site and the lessons just better for you to make it so that you uh, get exactly what it is that you want, right? And this whole method has been designed to make it easier for you. Like, you know, this right here, instead of getting into the site and just kind of like randomly picking, well, now you can see in the store all of the lessons are categorized here. So now you can start to create your own, while you're waiting for us to get these assessments together, you can start to create your own practice routine based upon, you know, asking yourself questions. How is my rhythm? Rhythm isn't all that great. Well, what does really have for these rhythm lessons? Have I gone through all of these? Do I fully understand all of this stuff? Even if I'm an advanced level player, have I ever vocalized rhythms? Okay. Um, all right. So uh, next question. Uh, well, let's see. Some tunes like So What have eight bars of the same chord with so few harmonic landmarks. How do you keep your place and know where you are so you can hit the chord changes nicely or do you just feel the eight bars, eight bar length and how? Well, it's interesting that you put so what because um, we're going to have a lesson on that very, very soon. Uh, probably in either December or January, the so what lesson will be coming out. There's a big surprise with that one as well, so I hope you'll check that out. Um, the eight bar length, you start by counting it, okay? I mean, when, when you're a new player, you just start by counting it um, because you just, you're not at the point yet in which you feel it. Um, but you will eventually start to feel that eight-bar length. Um, how that works, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't fully know, but I know that you will. You will start to feel that eight-bar length. So one thing that you could try to do for right now is just start to feel those lengths, okay? So put on your metronome, right? And then, you know, you can put your metronome on two and four, Okay. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, for right now, yeah. Let, let me let me just do this quick because it's going to be important. It's just going to take me a second to find this setting. Unfortunately, this thing always goes back to the original setting. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to shut off the bell. Okay. So. Setting. So here, I'm thinking of this as two and four. Let me just do this. One, two, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start with two measures, okay? So let me just do two measures. And I just this is just a C7 chord. <laughs> let me put this on so you can see what it is I'm doing. One, two, three, four. Just went up a half step. So you see how what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to feel two measure segments. Now I could try doing four measure segments on the same chord. And this is where I could practice my comping. Remember that my comping, the rhythm, it could be really whatever you want, right? So just think simple, quarter notes, eighth notes, uh, and rest. Uh, in terms of the voicing, I'm just doing my uh, third and my seventh, and my ninth, my fifth, and my root. So this is a chordal up top here. And I just go up a half step, or down a half step. Okay, so one, two, four measures. One, two, three. So you see, you know, I went up that chord voicing, that's the 7th and the 3rd, the 13th, the ninth, and the 5th. So on beat 1 of uh, the 4 measures, you know, I do something a little bit different. So I know that's my 4 measure, um, you know, that's my 4 measure 
uh, segment there. I can also then try improvising on four measures. working four measures at a time. Then you can expand that into eight measures. Um, making play-alongs for yourself is also a great idea. So rather than just having a metronome, you know, make a little bass line, even if it's just or just something, something simple and have some little drum track behind it. You know, you can get a lot of this software on Macs and PCs where, you know, you can get this easy sequencing software and be able to put something together uh, very quickly. We also have a lot of drum beats that you can download in the jam track section. Um, so you can use those drum beats and just put them right in the GarageBand or whatnot. GarageBand also has a lot of um, uh, beats that you can work with. And if you have an iPad, you can get a GarageBand for your, for your iPad. So you get a lot of options there. Uh, all right, let me take another picture, uh, another question here. Uh, all right, can you give ideas for creating a ballad rock intro progression for a minor song beginning on A minor? Okay, well, that's, that's a nice challenge. Um, now, the thing is, I have no idea what the song is, and maybe even if you told me the song, I might not even know it. Uh, but let's talk A minor. If Somebody says to me, okay, this is a, it's a rock ballad in A minor. You now just come up with a little introduction. There's a couple of things that I'm going to be thinking about immediately off the bat. Um, one, I want to think about, uh, you know, my tempo. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a slow, you know, ballad type tempo. But is this, like, what kind of beat is going to be, be behind it? <coughs> um, is it just going to be me, or is it going to be someone else? If it's just me, then that's how I'm going to approach this, is that it's just me. Um, how good is the singer? Is the singer good enough where I could start to play some, um, uh, you know, some harmony that's not just real straight rock harmony? If so, then I can have a little bit of fun with this. But if I wanted to just do a basic rock ballad introduction, you know, I'm thinking, again, remember, there's your one chord, your A minor, and then there's your five chord. The five chord will always lead you back to that one. So the five chord is always a good chord to end on if you're just doing an introduction, because then you can just kind of like do something like that, and then boom, the singer comes in. Um, in a ballad type setting, what's also nice is doing descending, um, uh, descending patterns. So check this out. Whatever the, whatever the lyrics are. So uh, what did I do here? So very simple, very triadic. A minor in second inversion. Okay? Just descending. It's a great descending bass line for minor here to know. Just keep that same A minor thing and just kind of chugging away like two, three, four. That little accent just went to the to the fifth there, and I can also bring in my A minor pentatonic scale in there as well. 
to do that. I can also add in that ninth as well. So notice what, how I was starting to do. The sixth. Then to the E. And check this out. This is nice. There's your sus four, that A. Check out the, the chromatic. Yeah. So that chromatic from B to B flat to A to, 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 the, to the G sharp. See how that's it? Real fast chromatic. Going up uh, uh, as well. This is another kind of cool thing. Check out that. That's the fifth, the root, the ninth, and the fifth. Check this out when I when I have that ascending pattern. It's a real cool pattern, isn't it? And this is what's nice about this is that it uh, it's not a typical chordal pattern like uh, a seventh chord like this, you know, where you have it's very tertial based in thirds. This instead is a fourth and a fourth, but then you also have that second in between. And what's awesome about this is it creates a very open sound. What kind of chord is that? But if this is my root, if that's A, well that's the fifth, that's the root, that's the ninth, that's the fifth. You have no idea what kind of chord it is. Right? It could be A minor, it could be A major. So I'll check this out. Now here's here's the thing. You want it to sound sadder, go down. You really want to get that like like nationalistic pride, like America, or whatever country you're in, you know, Germany, you know, Europe, you know, it's like, then start to go up like that. And then this fast stuff up here, it really, I mean, I'll tell you, I get kind of chills and goosebumps even when playing that. It. It's like so, like, you know, it's so um, invigorating, like... <laughs> that you can start to do, like, kind of random stuff with an accent. And then see how I ended on the E. Went to the, to the natural third to get that E major sound. And then I get back to A minor. Okay? Now this stuff down here, this random stuff that I was doing, I'm just thinking my A natural minor scale. So notice I did A, and it's a root, a root, and a fifth in there. So just look at it like that. It's, it's just a real stock pattern. Then let's go down to F. Now I can keep going down in thirds. Down to, this one's not going to work so well because we have natural. I'm going to do that. But like. So like an A to F. That going down a minor third, a uh, major third rather, is kind of cool. And then going down a minor third like that. F to the E. Right? So you go to the A, down a third to the F. Down a third to the D and come up a step to the E. So Thank you. 
Like, you put like some like rock and drum beat behind it, or some drummers are like, you know, like really like getting an active sound. That that's really hip. All right, and you get a bass player like really getting some stuff digging in there. That's a real rocking sound. That, that's a great sound. Now it's not really ballad, but you see how you can kind of tone it down. It's a more of a ballad thing, and then kind of bring it up. Uh, all right, so um, I think let me take one last question here. Um, okay, simple A C G D. Okay, well, there, there you go, Leon. Uh, that um, well, actually, no, wait. This this is you, Terry. Okay, Ex exactly. So if it's not a song, that A C G and D, we basically almost did that same thing. So what was it? Uh, a C you say A C G D. So let me do this for it. So like a. What am I doing there? Uh, so you notice this. The ninth to the third, that's the first thing to notice. Second thing to notice, you hear that rhythm. See that little? To the, the A after the B. Okay, kind of a little Floyd Kramer on all of a sudden. Remember, this is all flats, because uh, since I moved to different keys, all right, so that really would be an F sharp for D. Just root 5, root 3, 5, root. Should give you a couple of ideas there that you can uh, work with. Um, and then let's see. Uh, Donna, how can I take already written standards and embellish them to fit my feelings? Uh, well, uh, I'm going to give you a little secret. We're releasing uh, the courses on Monday uh, on DVD, and we're doing uh, a big discount on them. Uh, so I would take a look at the Cocktail Piano 101 and 102 course because uh, that's a, an eight-lesson um, uh, eight course. It's going to be eight DVDs, and I go through step-by-step step how to take those standards and then start to make your own arrangements from them. So that would be a good place to start. I would also suggest this is where sometimes that one-on-one -on -one is really good. So the piano would really live would be good um, because then you could hear, like you could say, okay, I'm working on this song. What would you do there? And then I could actually... Uh, demonstrate live some stuff or some of this new video feedback as well. So there are many options on how we can work together uh, on this uh, to be able to get you to that next level. So I would take a look at those and then if you still have questions, contact us. Like I said, we're more than happy to help you. All right. Um, okay, so 
Uh, okay, Patrice, there's a couple of good questions in there, like improvising, uh, playing along lines, and not getting lost. Um, let's take that one because um, I'm kind of, um, you know, like I said, I'm, 